Congressman Biggs, it's always great to have you on the Daily Signal podcast. Rachel, it's always good to be with you too. Well, you recently just got back from a trip to the U.S.-Mexico border, and I wanted to ask and go through some of the stops that you made, uh, but one of the first stops was in Sassabee, Arizona, getting to tour the border wall, and there's some spots where construction has ended, well, actually, it's you know, completely ended since the Biden administration ended the construction on the 20th of January, the day of the inauguration. So can you tell us a little bit about what you saw um, during this trip, and especially at this first stop? Yeah, so when we... We went there, there, our first stop was Sassabee. And Sassabee um, used to have like a mile of fencing kind of either way. And, and it um, had, at the end of the fencing, it had four strand barbed wire with a, with a small uh, kind of handmade gate uh, with a slip knot. So if anybody was coming in from Mexico, it would be really, you just lifted the, the slip knot over the post and in you could come. And all paths. Uh, he, from, the, from the north side, we could then see into Mexico, and you see all paths led to that that uh, that little gate there. But what we saw uh, under the Trump administration, they had extended that fence quite a ways, uh, a good number of miles on each side, and um, they, you know, it, it was just definitely an improvement that was there, and it, it slowed traffic down, according to our friends in the Border Patrol, and um, it went right to the edge of the. Indian reservation that said the Tohono O'odham reservation that's there and stopped. But, you know, it was, it was really good. It was, it's really an improvement. Well, as we've talked about a little bit, the Biden administration did end construction on the border wall. And so on a broader note, how has the rhetoric, do you think, from the Biden administration affected the situation already at the border with this construction ending? Is it resonating with caravans and illegal immigrants? What do you foresee happening um, as all of this movement now with the construction has stopped? Well, stopping the construction, um, they, they left um, gaps all along the border, and some of those gaps are 50, 60 miles or longer even uh, that people can get in because the, the fence didn't get finished. And then when you add the rhetoric in of the Biden administration talking about amnesty, um, their attempts to uh, prevent deportations, their, their attempts to stop the... MPP or Remain in Mexico program, uh, their their willingness to let lapse the agreements that they have with the Northern Triangle states, uh, Honduras, uh, El Salvador, and Guatemala, all of those things uh, basically incentivize people to come into the United States. And so that's why you're seeing caravans being uh, coming together. You're seeing cartels inviting people more, you're seeing um, uh, NGOs advertising. All of that is going to to bring more people in. It's going to act as a draw. And now this notion of re- basically revamping ICE and not uh, not removing people from this country who are violent criminals, uh, it's really going to be a problem uh, for the United States. And you're going to have a massive surge of people coming in, and um, a lot of those people just won't be very good. Well, speaking of that surge that you just mentioned, Congressman Biggs, um, there's, you know, expected to be quite a big surge. And the administration has talked about amnesty for more than 10 million illegal aliens. How do you envision more illegal immigrants coming into the U.S. for that amnesty? How do you envision how that will affect not only the country, but also the state of Arizona as a whole? Well, first of all, the the infrastructure of the Immigration Nationalization Services, they, they, it just cannot process and deal with it because uh, they're, they're also want to deal with increased refugee numbers and amnesty numbers. And when that happens, you're going to get back to the catch and release program that has been uh, really curtailed under President Trump. So what that means is people are going to come in, they're going to make a, a false amnesty claim. By the way, there are over a million of these people in the country today who were told to re, you know show back up and they've, they've never bothered to show back up. And they will be given a, a piece of paper that says, appear back at this particular building for your amnesty interview or hearing or whatever it may be, and it'll be a couple years out. That's what happens in catch and release. They'll go into the country. They'll be in our country, in the interior. There will be no one that goes and gets them because ICE will not have uh, uh, that authority to do it anymore there, or they'll curtail that authority. So you're going to get overrun. We don't have the infrastructure to deal with it, and uh, quite frankly, the the biggest 
month that we ever apprehended uh, in, in the big surge two years ago was uh, about 160, just under 160,000 people we apprehended. I believe we're going to be well over 160,000 on a monthly basis. Well, one of the stops that you made during this trip to the border was uh, the Nogales Port of Entry. Can you share a little bit about what you saw and learned during that stop? Yeah, so we, we, we visited the customs side of the house. So CBP, C stands for customs. Uh, so when we went, went in, we saw, you know, the apparatus. We saw the lanes, the cars. We saw the walk-through lanes of, of this one uh, Mariposa port of entry. And they took us in, and we could see they showed us an example of the substantial amount of fentanyl that they've, uh, that they've seized and, and other drugs as well. Uh, we got to see the loading dock where they're checking produce and everything else. I mean, it is a big-time operation that happens there. And um, yeah, drug trafficking is picking back up. And so as we went along the border, we had some areas where they said where they were it, hard drugs. And this is where it was right there, Nogales area right there along the border. It's, it's the hard narcotics that are coming in and now um, in substantial amounts. When we went further east, it was marijuana is still big and, and, and bigger because uh, it's cheaper to bring in black market marijuana than use the dispensaries in, in a state, even where in Arizona, where uh, pot is legal now. So you see increased drug trafficking. That's part of, of what happens when everything else is, is, uh, is, is human trafficking is increasing as well. When you see border crossings increase, you're going to see drug trafficking increase too. Is there anything you can talk about uh, when it comes to how cartels traffic these drugs into our countries and sort of the systems that they have down to evade, um, you know, law enforcement finding them? Is there anything you can share about how yeah. much of a science they really have this down to? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. So, like, they will make, um, in some of these commercial truck type things, they'll have uh, fake watermelons, for instance, or fake melons that have been hollowed out and there's narcotics placed in there. And they stick those in the center so that uh, uh, hopefully uh, as, if that truck's being x-rayed or if you have dog, uh, you know, drug sniffing dogs, that they won't catch it because you've got all those other things. They will, they, will, they will put them in engines. They will put them in tires. They will put them uh, just in amazing places in, in cars. They'll put them in body cavities. And uh, we saw examples of all of that while we were at, at the Mariposa, the Nogales uh, port of entry that, that you're talking about. So it, it is sophisticated stuff. And um, a lot of these people don't get prosecuted. Um, and so they just get sent back to Mexico and they'll, they'll try it again later. Well, one of the really enlightening parts of the trip um, that you went on was this visit to Bell Ranch in Nogales, Arizona, and the Chilton family uh, has this ranch. Can you tell us a little bit about how the border wall has really impacted their community? Yeah, so that's great. That's a great question. So as the, as the, the border wall in Nogales has been expanded, and by the way, Rachel, they kept a lot of the old border wall, which was shorter. It was 12 to 18 foot in different places. And then they built this new bigger wall, 30 feet high, it really has slowed traffic down in some of those areas because now you've got a double barrier and they've extended it out of ways. And they have found that it has really slowed down uh, some of the uh, encroachment from south of the border under the ranches. But as we were told, the fence ends. And, and right now, uh, because the Biden administration has no intention of finishing the fence, it ends. And so it basically acts as a funnel. Now they're going around the fence and they're coming in. And uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Chilton told us that they've got like 60 miles, something like that, where there's no fencing or, or really anything at all in uh, on his ranch. And so they continue to have people coming through. And some of the ranchers you and I met, they contacted us actually the very next day and said they just had a, a bunch of uh, uh, illegal you know, crossers uh, come across their ranch uh, the day after we were, had been talking to them. Well, one of the other people we got to speak with was Sheriff Mark Daniels and Sarah Vista, who talked a lot about the impact 
of the Biden administration ending construction on the border wall. And Congressman Biggs, can you share with us some of the concerns that he talked about um, that he is concerned will specifically impact his community in Sierra Vista? Well, he's, he's since Sierra Vista is so close to the border and Cochise County is is a big border, uh, you know, geographically and, and border county, he is concerned, uh, you know, human trafficking is big and drug trafficking is big. And the U.S. Attorney General's uh, in Arizona, they and all along the border, uh, they're they're overrun, quite frankly, and so they they require certain amount of cases, you know, drugs. I won't tell you the the, the poundage that you have to have, but a certain amount of poundage of drugs, and they have to have it on their possession when they call. It's got to, you got to catch them just so cold before they will take that case. So what they've done is because they're concerned about the crime and in the increase of crime in their uh, small community of Sierra Vista. Uh, the sheriff down there has done an excellent job um, with, they, they've got cameras, they've got um, people watching, and they've got a, a cooperative agreement with the county attorney there that they will prosecute those cases because they're really concerned about juveniles. Because one of the things that's happening is, is uh, on the American side, uh, young people are being recruited uh, to, for relatively, to, to the kid it's a lot of money, but to the drug cartels and whatnot it's not much money. They will, they will pass this money uh, along so that these kids will bring in drugs or help uh, human traffic. So they're concerned about that. And now the county attorney's down there, the local officials actually stepping in and they're prosecuting those, those cases as state crimes. And they have been resoundingly successful. What can you share about what the Border Patrol thinks about this border wall construction ending? I know in the media a lot of different reporting um, is discussed and talked about how the Border Patrol feels, but since you talk to a lot of these agents one-on-one -on -one yourself, what is your perspective on what the Border Patrol thinks of this construction stopping? Well, I almost universally when I talk to Border Patrol agents, they, they think the fence is very, very helpful. Uh, so, you know, they most of them agree it's not the be all and end all, but it it's very helpful because it only takes one agent to patrol two miles, two linear miles if there's a fence, but it takes three to five agents uh, per every mile if where there is a defense to to provide adequate control and command of that. So you're talking about a six or ten to one, somewhere between six and ten to one agents necessary. So they like the fence. They also need equipment. They want better communications. There are places where it's so rugged. A lot of people just don't realize how rugged it is out there, but it is so rugged that there are times they, they can't even communicate, so they want better communications equipment uh, uh, and, and whatnot. But the fence has been a really terrific deterrent, and if we could finish the whole fence, it would be a fantastic deterrent uh, and make our, our agents feel... Uh, uh, safer, and it would also make them more efficient. Well, and finally, Congressman Biggs, what does the ending of the construction of the border wall big picture mean for the safety of not only these ranching families along the border, but also just Arizonans as a whole? Well, Rachel, as you as you know, you've been down a couple of times now with us, and 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 you know that that the fencing is important because it slows it down. But when they when you don't have fencing. We, we really don't know what the number is of people that are getaways. We think we know, we have a, we think we have an idea, but they're getting away um, probably at least one to one. So we know right now we're catching about 3,000 people across the border every day. That means that you probably have 3,000 people you're not catching, something like that. And, and it isn't just that they impact uh, uh, the border ranchers. They get up into Tucson and Phoenix and then Phoenix is a, a, a loadout point to go all over the country. And they'll bring drugs and they'll smuggle these humans. They'll traffic in human beings, for Pete's sakes. They'll bring them in and they'll send them all over the country. And uh, even, even the people who have what I would call benign intent to be here, in other words, they want to come, they want to work, they are being trafficked because the, the cartel controls everybody who's coming across that border. Everybody who's coming across the border, whether you're coming uh, a legal shipment in a produce truck or whatever, they're all paying 
uh, a mordida of some kind to get across the border uh, from the cartel. And so what it does is, is you got bad guys that are coming in as well. And that spreads out to the entire country. And um, this, all of the rhetoric from the Biden administration is going to exacerbate that. It will not get better. It will get worse because of his policies and his rhetoric and claims. Well, Congressman Biggs, thank you so much for coming on the Daily Signal podcast and talking to us. We really appreciate having you with us. Absolutely, Rachel. Anytime.